All right, Logan. So um, you can have this so long as I get full reigns of Luigi's Mansion Three. Deal. Deal. I didn't know this was some kind of debate, but yeah, welcome to the. It's Diamond. Pitiless man. Hated his fellow citizens for their Also, now you know why we skipped this in our in our initial look at. So he raised an army of demons. No, no, it's okay. I mean, to be fair, um, it is it is uh, kind of interesting how the well the opening cinematic here was actually not only redubbed by but also redubbed by uh, someone I never would expected to ever touch in that evil game. Who be that? I um, here's a hint: all the world's gems are hers to keep. Lanny Manella. I... Wow. She's got a range. Yeah, she's been keeping she's been keeping busy these past few years. Jeez, now I know she can do Rouge, Bubsy, and frickin' Maleficent. Whatever the heck this is supposed to be. La Lady Manella. Or whoever the, the chick ca Caddy said in his review. Yeah, it's, oh. it's, it's Lanny, but uh, with that said, ladies and gentlemen, yeah, we're actually not doing, we're not skipping out on a look at it anymore. This is pretty much the real deal. Welcome Which, to our to yeah. our let's our, our commentary of the medieval remake. Yep. So we have a lot of opening cinematic stuff because uh, I think we've as we already mentioned that look at this game is strictly a note for note remaster, like literally like shot for shot remaster yeah. of the original. I I would say probably more so than the likes of say uh, Crash Insane or Spyro Reignited. Like this really is like exactly beat for beat just with prettier graphics which is great to show how far we've come in technology so yes uh, to, to to quickly sum up what we saw in that little opening cinematic there was an ancient evil necromancer known as zarok who challenged the entire kingdom of galomir but thanks to the valiant efforts of a hero known as sir daniel fortescue that he his forces were repelled and the battle was won and he was <laughs> He was cast. We thought he was cast off, and we yeah, thought he, we'll we thought he died. Him. But I guess, well, you know, him being a necromancer, he knows he knows his ways out of the uh, through the underworld. And well, he's back with a vengeance and uh, two additional um, spikes on his head. I I still can't get over that, de and on his chin too. It's like I can't get over that detail. Me neither. But they, they really want to hammer in the point that he's evil. But definitely yeah, doesn't look point. as moist. He doesn't look like a shriveled up banana anymore. <laughs> but yes, this is but yes, this is his grand plan because now it's been many, many years since the, since Galamir ever thought to fear his power, which means they have now been lulled into a false sense of security, which he will take advantage of and exploit to the ends of the earth. The good news is, is the good news is, is that his reign of power will cease once the sun rises. Uh, the problem with that is He's the sun is never sun. going to rise again. Yeah, I was about oh. to say, this, this spell basically makes it so that it's always going to be nighttime. And again, and I'll, 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 still, I'll still say that I do think the uh, resurrection got did a better job of really showcasing what, what, he, what he means by that, because, well, it was sunrise by the time he casted his spell, and, well, it pretty much shrouded to eternal night. All I did here, here was just defogging. <laughs> I know, it's like, thank you, actually, that makes driving so much safer, but yeah, yeah, I think I think having a cool, like, light-to-shadow thing would have been better, but he also can possess and uh, torment the townsfolk. Who sleep with uh, an axe and a frying pan by their bedside, double damn. You never know, it's the Middle Ages. That is true. Oh, and, he all, oh, and, he's, also, uh, remo and he's also releasing their souls to uh, command them into an uh, inhuman, uh, unholy army. Now they're all to be feared. The husband, the wife, and even the little girl. Also having an axe. <laughs> yeah, it's the perfect, it's the new, it's the new hit toy that's sweeping off the shelves. But no. So, to, for, to cement his rule, he's going to need some, you know, man force, manpower. And he's willing uh, to take anything, mm -hmm. even the undead. That is why we're in a bit of a pickle. Yep. A mo a Meaty so? evil. Yes, a, a nice little cheeky nod. And yeah, again, uh, one of those games that I never thought I would grow to love 
that much until I saw Kid Icarus review the original and then hearing Hype and James talk about the original. And me introducing him to the SGB playthrough of the original. Which is also wonderful. Seeing the, uh, seeing, and then we looked at Resurrection, of course, but now we get to see a true-to-form remaster. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No genie in the eye. Oh yeah, that's that's the biggest improvement that this game could ever pull. They 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 put that fucking genie cyclops thing where he belongs in the garbage. Yeah, because that's the yeah. thing. It's like unlike Resurrection, which tried to it took the basic you know synopsis of the story, but tried to like put its own spin on it. Res this is basically note for note the exact same story with like little to no changes to the script. Speaking of oh, the, speaking and, of oh. the plot, um, Jordy. Here's let's let's see what how Sir Dan Fortescue was able to you know put it, submit himself in history as the greatest hero that ever lived. You see, let's the history charge. books don't tell you the history books don't tell you everything. Is that sure he was at the battle and led the charge? Well, what they didn't uh, tell you is that he was the first one to die. Right in the Straight eye. Straight up. Right there, which, real quick, I love that shot of the sun with him. Just, yeah. God, that's so awesome. But, yeah, he was the first freaking guy who died. He didn't even show any battle courage or anything. But, eh. We gotta make what we can. Mm, yeah. And, hey, he's not and hey, he's not evil, and thank goodness that, uh... Oh, Rise and Shine Dan looks like he got a second chance at that whole hero thing. Try not to blow this time, eh? The best place <laughs> to look for a dead dad. <laughs> I, do, I do appreciate that. I mean, even as a remake, like there's, it still, it still pulls a lot of the same old strings, especially the voice acting for the gargoyles. Oh, because yeah, I don't know if we told you this uh, yet, Jordy. Uh, hype, go ahead and tell her. Basically, the the voice acting that you hear in this, which I think is a really lovely voice acting, it is actually ripped straight from the original game, but just cleaned up with crisper audio. But yeah, basically, they actually managed to. Again, really hammers home just how note for note this remake is. The fact that they're actually able to take the original voice work and still apply it here, and it's still sounding just as nice as it did back then. Well, well then that's the thing. Like, if you look at that's the thing. If you look at other PS One games, like say Resident Evil, like I don't think the voice acting holds up. But here, I think it's still. I think this proves that it still holds up. Yeah. With how campy and like fun it is. We hope so. Thank you, gargoyles, Jules. who may or may not, who may or may not be working for Zarek. They're not. No, they're not. They're just they're just bystanders. They they're just kinda because they like, keep, hmm? but they keep calling. They keep saying like they keep referring to him as the master or whatever. I think it's just one of those instances where they're kind of like that element that just sits by the sidelines and just watches everything unfold. Fair enough. Not to mention, I think it, I think one of the gargoyles mentions that well, they like Zarek demands that they call him the master, even though it's like it's yeah. still a whole lot of. Oh. Oh, and by the way, oh, and by the way, if you're listening to this, oh, oh, go ahead. I was gonna say that book just said we were asleep for a hundred years. We ain't no sleeping beauty. <gasps> no, no, we are very. <laughs> no, this sure. is actually the realistic. This is the realistic take of what Sleeping Beauty would look like after she slept out for that long. Sorry yeah. to break it to you. Oh, and also, if you're listening to it right now, uh, yes. I absolutely adore this game's soundtrack, and I thought that Jordy would also get a kick out of it because uh, the original uh, creators, the, when they were first making Medieval, they certainly cited Tim Burton as a huge inspiration for this game's theming. Ooh, very nice. I like it. Mm -hmm. What's even cooler about the soundtrack is that um, the, uh, they basically brought back the, brought the big boys that they had for the Resurrection soundtrack, and honestly, at first it seems like they, they just ripped it straight from that game, but like, there's a whole bunch of nuances and such that and such to really prove home that they just redid it all from scratch, and it still sounds as magnificent as it did actually, back in that way back when. Hi. Oh, actually, oh. you say whoop, shoo, shoo, you little f glowy fly, get away. But yeah, I was about to say like. Yeah, that's pretty much your default weapon for now, his arm, until you get your sword. And the star runes are basically like keys. You, you go to certain gates and use them to unlock paths. You can charge up secondary weapons for various attacks, and as you're looking in the left there's again, we already covered this in our look at, but as you're looking in the left, yep, we can swap between two weapons very quickly. Which, which is, is how bold very nice. Is. Yes. We got super we got super moves. And we got a mighty shield. shield. Hooray! Woo! Yeah, shields in this game, they kind of, kind of decades before Breath of the Wild thought to do it to every single thing you can carry, the shields kind of have their own durability meter, whereas they can only take so many hits. If you look at their percentage, once that percentage hits zero, the shield breaks. 
Mm-hmm. Which, I guess, I guess I need to note, I know a lot of people were still complaining about it even in this remake, but I, I, I'm not too against it because what I like, Handy when disarmed, nearly blunt, swing it hard, throw these away, okay, fair hmm. enough. Less protective plate, more dinner plate, fair mm-hmm. enough. Famous Rune Fortress Star Power, and this Book of Galamir, which I'm not going to be spending too much time in just because for time constraints, but... And to give you something to like actually look into when you play the game, but th- that's basically your bestiary, and they have a lot of fun flavor text in that bestiary. Like the fact that of all things, they actually remember that Morton the Earthworm was a thing. Oh yes, but yeah. Sorry. Anyway, um, what was I saying? We we're talking about the shield. Yeah. Okay. A lot of people still complain that the uh, combat in this reading. game is. Oh. <laughs> sorry, but the com- people say that the con the combat in this game is still very iffy, but. I kind of love that idea of this detail of that, because yeah, you learn more, especially in this little prequel comic. Dan knows next to nothing about fighting. Ah. He, is, he is very much the kind of person who will flail wildly and hope for the best in every encounter. Yeah, because basically, just to give you an idea of history, Dan himself wasn't really much of a warrior when he was alive. In fact, he was more of a storyteller who happens to be really good friends with the king. And because like, because he was good friends, friends with the king, his majesty kind of basically fudged the truth about Dan's demise just for the sake of, you know, re- you know respecting their friendship and letting the people have a good story to tell. Pretty much. Yes. Oh, and that magic bottle we got are basically our energy tanks from Samus Metroid stuff. Or 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 the um or the uh freaking uh heart tanks from Mega Man X. Yes. Those two. Mm. So, with that said, and boy yeah, howdy, are intro. you gonna need all every last one of those oh, bottles? There. Yes. This yeah, game is very. It... Bru- this game's per- this game's particularly brutal in that if you ever die, take your first steps as a hero and slay some helpless zombies. That may seem cranky, but okay, they just woke up from a nice long long nap. <laughs> Total, Please, totally understandable. Be considerate. But uh, yes. Uh, if ever you die in a level, the level just outright you have to start it all over from the beginning. Aww. But it does. But the game does have an auto save whenever you're on the map, thankfully. Well, oh, that's yeah. good at least. Now I wanted to actually bring this up earlier when we were bringing up like the fact how how well the original medieval. I mean, the, the original medieval is pretty much full front and center for this remake compared to just well you know any sort of fine tuning kind of like Resurrection did. Though mm-hmm. I will also say that I do appreciate that when it comes to this game's sense of humor, it's most it's not really shoved in your face so much. More so, it's something you read got to read between the lines. Yeah, because otherwise, this game does treat itself like it's, this game can be very intimidating at points. It's it was definitely like it definitely played to the difficult like to the more challenging 3D platformer of the time, and is not afraid to. Uh, not afraid to make it that you earn that final credits screen, but uh, yeah. Well, well, that well, then I also just mean the, the the matter of fact that well, like yeah, this. I mean, look at Sir Dan here. He looks like a very a typical kooky, semi cartoony, semi realistic skeleton pre character. <laughs> yet everything, then yet everything else around him can range from being just as stylistically um, cartoony or creepy to stuff that's just downright menacing. Which, oh boy, I can't wait till we get to that, because, yeah, no, no, yeah, uh, again, the, the colors, the design work, everything, it's so nice and polished, I love it. And I, th- I think the best example I can bring up is um, the, the gargoyles, for example. Like, you've seen them when we it was they were first talking to Dan, and like, even though they, they high up their voice like this, they still look pretty freaking intense, like, maybe not so much intimidating, oh, yeah, no, but they look, mm-hmm. they look like, they look like creatures that, well, aren't supposed to be like a, tip, like a typical butt to a joke. Like the ones in Resurrection yeah. were, yeah. But oh wait, real quick, yeah. Because I'm always curious. Like, I wonder if, uh, oh yeah, these are healing pills. Um, I wonder if the reason why gargoyles. I always heard something like gargoyles are meant to look scary because it's either gothic architecture or they thought it scared away evil or something like that. Which I think it's a mixture. Of By the okay. way, the, the healing pools. We should make a notice of it. Uh, for people that see that and think, oh, uh, that's just easy healing whenever I want. If you stand in them for too long, they do disappear after a while. However, they do respawn when you re-enter a level. Mm-hmm. Oh, I hope they keep that if they remake the sequel. I, they better, because that was like the one thing they did not need to change for that game. In the sequel, if, you, if it disappeared in a level, even if you came back to the level, it would forever be gone. I feel like that. I feel like that was an accident. I don't know. Maybe, I, I don't. Maybe they thought it was too exploitable. But I mean, I know that. I know that the the Amer- the U- U.S. release Dan of uh, Dan Blue. <laughs> Dan Cam. Yeah, that's what they call it. And honestly, it's just I mean, strafing. It's pretty much what it is. It's strafing, and I, I mean. It might seem fairly useful on the surface, especially with like 
um, armed weapons, you, re you really don't control that much differently from usual! Oh, God. <laughs> oh, bah, 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 bah. That was not me, Rachel. Which, uh, and as you're hearing, I love how the music's also dynamic. Whenever you're in combat, it intensifies. Oh, yeah, I love that a lot. Uh, oh, also one thing that, that James was very happy to know is that uh, what I'm playing here, they definitely did a very good job of optimizing the game further between the demo, the short-lived demo, and this full release. Yeah. It definitely doesn't chug as much as it is, did on the short-lived demo. Yeah, and it doesn't it doesn't heat up my it didn't heat up my PS4 quite as badly as it did with the demo. Yes. Again, I wish I had a PS4 Pro, but especially with the PS5 possibly to be announced later this year, I'm just kind of I, I'm I'm honest. If it's true that the PS5 will be completely reverse compatible with PS4, I may just come out. Oh, and um, just if I could cut you off real five. quick, this is go an ahead. important gameplay mechanic here: the chalice. You know how when you go through a level, you see a little percentage every time you defeat an enemy. Once that percentage goes to 100, you can be able to collect the chalice in each level. And when collecting the chalices is what grants you access to the Hall of Heroes. But we'll learn more about that once we get there. Yes, uh, which in the in the short lived demo we could collect it, I think, or something like that. But we, we just collect it. We just worked. It. We just couldn't go to the Hall of Heroes because, like, right by the time you clear the level, it just boots you to the whole buy the game, pre order the game now screen. Yeah. So, which is which apparently is exactly how it did in the original demo disc, which is fun. But hmm. uh, oh, can I go through here? Skull Gates. Skull Gates, the master of the hilltop mausoleum. The stained glass demon. Stained glass the demon. Skull. That sounds All pretty right, so, cool. So it sounds like we need to get going to that mausoleum if we want to continue out into the world of the living. Mm -hmm. hey, That's perfectly fine by me. Well, None of these people seem up for chatting. Yeah, one thing I will say is kind of amusing in this game is that, like, yeah, you're going to have to go back to that gate later. Weirdly enough, though, it actually won't. You don't have to repeat the same level just to do it. Like, there's going to be a new level dedicated to going through that gate, and well, it just honestly, aside from like Chalice collection, there's like practically no backtracking to be found in this game. Yeah, which oh, and uh, and the gold we'll get to in a little bit, but there is a reason for it. It's not just a high score, and I'm trying to be careful here because I think we're actually pretty close to unlocking the Chalice. I just need some enemies to all. Oh, there Ooh. they are. Whoa. Oh, look, the Chalice fodder. Nice. But yeah, as you see, be very careful. Many enemies will certainly catch you off guard with how fast that they can strike. And some and of them how... will just straight and some of them will just straight up surround you and just whittle down whatever yeah. life you have left in your bones before your shield. There's there the chalice. One thing I will say I do I will give credit to resurrection is the fact that even though even if you didn't have your chalice completely full, you could just pick it up anyway and just collect and collect more essence for it along the way. Here, unfortunately, it goes back to the same old rule of you can't pick up the chalice until it is full. Oh, oh wow. Yeah, it is, it is kind of a shame. Anyway, why don't we meet up with our first uh, merchant? First. Oh, well, there goes our shield. Well, it's a good thing we found this merchant gargoyle. Oh, he doesn't sell shields, but yep, this is where we can buy to refill uh, most of our uh, consumable weapons. Yeah. Okay, we just feed him the gold. I'll just do one more. Yeah. And then nom, 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 nom. I still love that. Just 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 drop in the bag full of gold he just 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 consumes it all. Yeah. But yeah, definitely uh definitely as you're seeing right there, definitely get in the habit of ducking and weaving things. Ducking and weaving your opponents to uh, you know, let juke them out and then strike. Otherwise, yeah, mo most enemies in this game you should not just run into head on, especially with this low health at the moment. And above all, and above all else, never be afraid to charge up, charge up your sword to do a spin attack in case like you're surrounded by all like a bunch of um, grunts. Yes. Oh, and uh, don't you can't swim. Well, yeah. not in deep, deep water. We're bones. Skin and bones? Yeah. Well, no skin, just bones. <laughs> I'm talking about us. <laughs> well, no, we're talking about oh, Sir Dan. Well, yes. He's the one doing all the trekking around here. And here's the I end know. of the level. That's true. We are making him do say? all the work. What do you have to say, Mr. Gargoyle? Oh, snap. The end of the game's already here. Well, oh, wait. The demon from the mausoleum. Mm -hmm. Plots of I love knows. your voice for this guy. No, it, it, he's such, it's such a fun character, and I'm really happy that they kept that. I'm not, yeah. not to say that I don't... Oh, by the way, for the first time ever, 
that we can show anyway. All, All the mightiest, mightiest heroes, heroes are celebrated here. They aren't so interested in being your friends just yet. Slayers that are good to, and I didn't read the whole. And maybe thing. they'll change them. Basically, Sorry, I should have given you the info. Oh. Welcome to the Hall of Heroes. Hello. Where the bravest warriors from history spend eternity. Feasting, singing, and arm wrestling. Or frozen <laughs> statues. Oh, a, a, a charitable pastime. You may be able to persuade them. Yes, this is basically our big... Uh, this is how we get... Um, this is pretty much how we get the bulk of any of our upgrades in this game. Yeah, pretty much. Like, this is where you get most, if not all, of your main primetime weapons. And if you look to your right, you will see a... To oh, pay oh. homage to the heroes... Aww, that's, that, that'd be a canny retcon over there. Teddy Kim. <laughs> Thank you, comic. For the record, I don't think the, I don't think the comic is considered canon, so make of that what you will. I know, it do, but the comic does pay some he pay some homage to the sequel. And yes, oh, your eyes are not fooling you. Uh, here's a here's a sculpture of us that is currently as hollow as we are. Yep. Yeah. Once we prove, we, once um, we prove our worth, it'll be a little bit more solid. Captain Fortescue, it's me, Canny Tim. Does the battle go well? <laughs> I love his voicing. Yeah. Well, speaking of which, um, a lot of this, a lot of the um, um, voice of clips are archived. Uh, Sir Dan and uh, one clip from Zerok are brand new for this uh, remake. Yeah. Oh, well, the, okay. the clips, of, well, the clips of Sir Dan and these cutscenes are archived in game. Like actually, during oh no no, no 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 hi everything from Sir Dan was 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 brand new, especially really? that like that was not from the original. Really? I, it's it's like, one of those like, things that you'll notice, like if you really pay, if you really listen to it and compare it to the original, like it's definitely oh. different. Anyway, here's our first mate, first up, first new weapon, the crossbow, the medieval mm. machine. Gun. And with that, we can say goodbye to our throwing daggers. Yep, I, I'll hang on to them once in a while, but yeah, the the crossbow is definitely going to be our best chance of dealing a lot of damage rapidly. But yeah, with that, that's already the end of our first part because. I guess I should say this game is also not too terribly long, which is why I was also really like satisfied to know that the price of this game was also priced very fairly. I think. Yeah, you'll get you you'll get your money's worth and then some. And uh, what I mean what I mean by that by then some we'll save for we'll the, see. The, the finale. Yep. So toodaloo and join us in the next part as we chase after Zarok. Till next time, guys. Fare thee well, hero of Galamir. Hmm. <laughs>